Hi everyone and welcome. I'm Marcy Best, current independent demonstrator with Stamping Up. Thank you for joining me on this Wednesday bingo night. I'm super excited to have you. And um, I wanted to say hi to everybody. I'm glad you've already jumped on. Melanie, Mary, I did see that you had another surgery. I hope it's going okay and you're doing well. Um, we'll be here when you are ready, so don't you worry about that. Hi, Jennifer. Welcome. Hi, Bobette. Linda, Leslie, Olivia, Eileen, hello. And Jennifer, it's your first time. Yay. I think I have a couple people's first time. A few people, actually. Uh, let's see. Eileen, Carol, hello. Kathy. Hi, Dana. Hey, Marcia, Annie, and Robin. So, First off, I want to let you know that I do still have five kits available. So if you want to go to my blog, marcybestcur.com, and go ahead and go to where it says uh, bingo, PDFs, classes, that kind of thing. Um, there's a link below. It says June. Make sure you click on June's bingo. And you can click on that and still register. We're going to do a little bit of chatting at the beginning. We're going to get started with a project first. And then we're going to play bingo. So um, if you want to play, if you sign up, just let me know that you signed up and give me your five numbers and um, make sure that you pay because it's that's the, how the quantity works on my blog. Once one is gone, if you, when you pay for it, it's gone. So if you register but you don't pay, five others could come in, that, then they'll be gone and then it won't have you as paid. So hi, Bobette. Hi, Michelle. Hi, Deborah. Hello. So I have some fun stuff for you tonight. Um, some really fun cards. Now I'm going to tell you, I created these cards in April because um, like end of April, beginning of May, because I left and I didn't want to um, not have them done and ready because already I'm just feeling like I'm back to normal and getting uh, stuff done. But boy, have I been busy. So not only have I um, had these done. Thank you, Stephanie, for being my die cut fairy. I so appreciate it. So Stephanie cut everything for me. So that was so helpful while I was gone. Um, I, the Daisy class is um, prepped and done and ready, but there are still kits available for that. Also a link below. And then also um, I have July's bingo already created and I'm going to give you a sneak peek tonight. So I got to write that down. Sneak peek. One of the things you will notice is in July, I am going to up my bingo cost just by $5. Um, most of you know the catalog has been um, up a couple of years in a row, and I have not raised my price. And then, I um, mean, it's been three years, I believe, and then, or two and a half maybe for bingo. And then my classes will also be 40 now, that being said, the other little change I want to make is if you RSVP by the date that you are, that it says, please RSVP by, you will get a free gift. And the reason I'm doing that is because a lot of people sign up day of, day before, week of, and I just can't order and get the gifts in on time. And so I'm freaking out that I don't have it and I'd like to give them all the same because I like to try to give something that you're using in the kit, even though, um, you know, it really doesn't matter. I know you like to get whatever you can, but I like to put a free gift in and I don't want to take that away. <coughs> so if you could do that, that would be extremely, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> that would be helpful. Sorry about that. <clears throat> so um, those are the two little changes I'm going to make. Um, because I want to still provide you with um, the cards that I love creating. And um, you get a lot of products. So for those of you that know my bingos, you know you get a lot of product, a lot of die cuts, and a lot of detail in the cards. So I hope that um, that's okay with you. All right. And the next thing, so that's bingo and classes. And that'll start in July. Uh, let's see. I'm just looking here. Australia, Jeanette, hello, how are you? Hi, Trina. Welcome, welcome. Oh, and Deborah's from Australia. 
Good morning to you guys. I know it's morning because I chat with someone from Australia and it's usually 1130 at night, my time, and we start video chatting and, and we have a good time, but um, the time is, whew. hi Robin, I'm a, I think I missed you. So anyway, um, so that's my quick announcements for that. I'm gonna quickly go over the, um, I still do have a couple paper shares left too. Um, and trust me, they come in handy. Even if you've gotten all the DSP that you like and that you have, I have come down to thinking, oh my gosh, I just need one sheet of paper or just a little bit more paper. And then I remember I have an extra paper share and I'm like, oh, I have it. And then I don't have to order a whole new pack. So that's kind of nice. Um, can I have my numbers? I forgot to save them. Yes, you can, Nancy. Let's see. Oh, let me look here. All right, let me look. I don't know why, Nancy, but I have you for January bingo, but I do not have you, not under that last name. So I do not have you for um, that bingo. And I hope I didn't slow myself down by being, going looking for those numbers. But um, Linda, so if it's a different name, Nancy, let me know. Um, Alinda, 8, 12, 19, 21, 26. Let's see. So Nancy, I know I was doing trying to um, tag all of the bingos and everything when I was gone and then I didn't touch them and then I added them all when I got back. Um, I know also that a couple of you might have had some issues trying to do your registration form. I never got them. I searched my email. So there's three places I could find them. I searched my email and then my blog has a place that shows me who filled out the registration form. And so that's my double check to make sure if I received the form, because of course I need your numbers and I need your um, address for the new people, especially. Uh, I want to make sure I got everybody else's numbers. So Nancy, yeah, if it's a different name, please let me know. We are all drinking Coke Zero. Mine would be iced tea as usual. Okay. So, Oh, so Nancy, please let me know um, if it's a different name so I can look it up. All right. Any, if anybody else needs their numbers, I will look again and just let me know. And then I will, um, oh, Lorraine just paid. Okay, Lorraine, let me see. Um, give me your numbers right here and I'll get them off the blog later. Uh, Lorraine, just give me your five numbers between one and 30. Rosie, if you're still here, I'm gonna explain bingo. So if you wanna hang out for just a little bit. Hmm. All right, Nancy. Oh, let me look. Linda. Eight, twelve, nineteen, twenty-seven. Okay, so let me double check. All right, Linda. Oh, that's not bingo. Let me go back. I just want to double check real quick. I think I took some old numbers, Linda, because I don't think. Let me look.
All right, I have your registration. I have your payment. I do not have a registration form from you, Linda, so I just took old numbers. So if you want um, different numbers, just let me know. Okay, Lorraine. I put in different numbers, yeah. What is NSW? Oh, you signed up yesterday. Nancy, it is not coming up at all. The last email, let me look here. The last thing I have from you is April 25th and you purchased some um, retired items, but let me go back farther. I have February bingo registration, and that is the last I have, but let me look. I just want to double check and make sure. Yeah, February is the last one I have, so... Um, if you want to play along, we'll play along, and then I will keep checking. I don't want to, you know, mess it up, but it, I don't show it at all. I have you purchasing uh, retired items, and then I have um, February bingo. But I will double check. Let me write this down. We can just keep going and playing and then I'll just, I will double check for you. Okay, Linda. All right, Lorraine, I have your numbers and Linda, I've got yours. Oh, you are so welcome, Lorraine. Okay, so let's get busy, and um, Nancy, I don't know, I'm just going to do one more check, you guys, I'm sorry, I'm going to just double check in my PayPal, so I just want to make sure, because I haven't had any issues with my email, but I just want to make sure that I didn't receive anything. And if you can double check and send me a receipt, if you did, because... That way, uh, we don't miss anything, but I'm double checking. No, February is the last one I have for you for a bingo. All right, so let's get started. Sorry about that, everybody. Nancy, if you want to purchase another one, you are more than welcome to right now. We've got plenty of time before we actually start bingo. All right, but we are going to get started. So let me put my paper over and let's get going. Oh, let me show you. I forgot to show you real quick. Um, so the sneak peek, because I know we're going to get crazy busy. Um, I showed you guys the Daisy sneak peek. That's the sneak peek for the class coming up. And I do still have some spots available but in July here is sneak peek for July's bingo okay so that is going to be a great bingo and so remember that and as you as we do this bingo you'll kind of get it but what we do is we uh, I try to create projects that um, has everything provided for you, but there might be a couple things that you could substitute easily. A sentiment, you know, a, a flower, a, you know, you know, something that you might not have that exact stamp set. And this first card is going to kind of be an example. You could put something else in there if you want to, but you do not have to. All right. All right, Nancy, if you do want to play, just give me your numbers and then go register and all that good stuff. Okay. So how bingo works. Let me explain it because I know we have a lot of new people. So we're going to create four projects and we're going to play four bingo games. So I'll do a project 
and then I'll do a game. And it looks like my TV is way behind my screen, so I'm going to freshen it up here. Okay, so we'll do a project, and then we start bingo. And then what happens is I will put numbers down. I have a little bucket here, and it's got numbers in it. And as I put them down, if that is one of your numbers, then you're going to type in a B, okay? And then I will keep calling numbers. When I call your second one, you type B-I, okay? So when you have B-I-N-G, make sure you have bingo typed and ready to go. And as soon as I call your the fifth number and it's yours, you just have to hit enter. And so it pops up. And when what happens is the first person that calls bingo or writes bingo, then they win a $100 shopping spree in my Stamping Up store. So what you can do is you, and I do this four times. If the first person that is a consolation prize that's not, that didn't win, they, like they called bingo, but they were second, then they will get a consolation prize, okay? And so um, I will get, I will mail something to you with your, your kits. So I have your kits here. They do not get mailed out ahead of time. I'll create these projects and then they, they'll be ready to go. So I was able to get your, your gifts in there and I, I do a card for you. So I get all that done and ready to go. This is also my way of realizing if I missed something or forgot something in your kit. I wanna make sure you get a complete kit. The other reason we do it this way is so you can sit back and relax, chat with everybody, play bingo, have fun, watch me create the cards so that when you get the cards, you kind of know what to do, but you can always come back and see this video. When this video is over, I will go in the description and I will put a timestamp and it will say project one, project two, and you can just choose which one you want to do first or on that day. It'll always be there. You can always go back and create your projects when you want to. So I will be printing all the labels tomorrow and get everything out by Friday and um, they'll be ready for you to come back and create at your leisure. Um, on the package, it should, if I remember, it should say at the bottom, June Bingo. That way, if you don't get to it right away, when you pull it out, you remember, go back and look at June's Bingo, okay? That way you know uh, which projects those kits go to which video. So I hope that makes sense. When you, you're gonna email me, and my email is marcy at marcybesker.com and you're going to email me your list when you win you're going to email me your list of what you want the first 100 dollars of your order i will be paying for that is because you won and i send that to you when you when you put in your order obviously and i would appreciate if you put in 150 dollars because that's a, that's a party. So not only do you get, you're only paying $50 for $150 in product. You also get your extra 10% to choose some items too, because then you become the host of your party, right? So, um, that, I hope that makes sense to you. Um, your orders must come to me in, for June. I will not put in orders in July. So please make sure you get them into me before the end of June. I like to make sure the specials are current, everything is current, the DESP is on sale right now. That is all qualified and I ship your order directly to you. So I hope that makes sense. Oh, thank you, Linda. Yes, please make sure that at the top of your um, chat, it says live chat, not top chat. That way you can see everything that's going on and what's happening and everything that is live. Okay, so otherwise the top chatters will show up. I wanna make sure I see everybody. So it's a live chat. So make sure yours is on live chat. And we are ready to start our first project. I hope that makes sense. You have plenty of time to ask questions. If I don't see it, somebody will probably be able to tell you, but I'll make sure that I see everything before we actually start bingo. All right, so let's get started. Here is our first card. This is the one I showed you guys a sneak peek of. And so this is the one we are going to do. 
Melanie, you can. You have until I start bingo. So go ahead and register and pay and just tell me what your numbers are. Nancy, if you can tell me your numbers because I'm not going to go back to my email because it keeps doing weird stuff on me and um, it makes my YouTube like slow down. So just give me your numbers too. All right, so I thought this was such a cute card. We are going to use the time arrangements. Oh, I didn't pull the dies out, but um, um, you'll see the dies in here. I'll show you what, what they do. So let me get my colors out here and my stamps. Okay, so what you're gonna do is we're gonna bring out, you're gonna get a package just like this, okay? And it's gonna say project one. So you'll know which one it is. I tend to do a lot of die cuts, a lot of pieces or, or technique or something on them. Um, just so, you know, you get a really nice card. I like to do a little more than I think um, a lot of people expect. So I hope that's good. Okay, I did see your payment come in. Let me write this down real quick. Nancy, I just don't want to. Nancy, okay, your numbers are 25. 3, 30, 16, and 20. All right, gotcha. Okay, so what we're going to do first is let's go ahead and do our stamping. All right, and you guys know that I like to use my little no longer available little grid sheet. Just like keep things clean over here. All right, so the first thing let's do is let's just do our sentiment first. Now, this is another thing um, on all the cards. If you don't have this stamp set, any sentiment, whatever, this is the, you're gonna get this. So just find something that fits in there. And on this card too, if you don't have this stamp set, you're not gonna have these little circles. Just like this stamp set has little flowers, find something else in another stamp set, something that you like that is you know tiny that you can maybe put on. You can also just take this piece and emboss it, okay? And it'll be, <laughs> can you hear my cat? She's crying at the door. My husband came home and then left to go golfing and now my cat's like, where is everybody? Um, so emboss it if you don't have something like little flowers or I just decided to use this. Also in this card, I did this just to show you. I added this in here, okay? But if you don't have the stamp set, choose uh, something else that you have. Um, I'm trying to sign up for tonight. I see the link. Yeah, make sure it's June, Corey. Make sure it's the June one, and then let me know your numbers. Okay, so um, I added this just to show you, if you have this stamp set, add a little color in there with some stamping. That way it's not just that. Add, so pull anything out of any stamp set and just add a little stamped item. It just adds a little bit more. For you guys, you'll get everything but this. Um, I just, like I said, if you don't have this stamp set, if you do, that's Gorgeous Grape. Um, black with Gorgeous Grape. Um, I colored that with Gorgeous Grape. Um, just with my markers or my blends, I believe. So anyway, that is just kind of a little hint on that. We're gonna get our black ink. And I'm just gonna try to go. I look at the bottom line and just make sure it looks straight because then that usually kind of makes everything else okay. Oh, hello. Okay, so this, make sure that, see how the really has the L's and they're kind of loopy and so that's hard to tell straight, but just look at that across the bottom and then that should be good. I pressed a little hard on that. A was kind of inky, but it looks all right. All right, then the next thing we're gonna do is bring in our soft sea foam. The other thing for the new people is I don't do PDFs unless there's like a fancy fold that's a little more, you know, in detail. A lot of times it's right here with you. You could always measure it when you get it. Um, if it's something simple, like if this was folded back and it was just, you know, a super simple one, then I don't. But for the most part, I, I would do a stamp set. So that, I mean, a PDF. So this is soft sea foam. And so what we're going to do is we're just going to 
stamp here and there. I'm going to do the light ones first. It really doesn't matter. I'm just kind of adding a little here and there. So I did four. And we'll do some fresh freesia. I like to just wipe it off and then I like to just stamp over just to get any, see there's water. It just gets in those little holes and I just want to make sure I get that off. All right, so now we're going to do fresh freesia. And you're just going to kind of randomly stamp them. I'm kind of going from where I did on um, this other card just because I did a lot of focusing on, you know, where I was putting things. And so I decided, okay, I'm just going to kind of look at it. I just kind of spread them out. You can always come back in with another color and, you know, figure that out. So, hi, Lisa, how are you? All right, so I'm just going to do it over here. All right, so now that's fresh freesia. I'm going to come in with Highland Heather now. I decided not to do Gorgeous Grape, even though our card base is Gorgeous Grape, because um, it's a little dark, and I kind of wanted the, the background to be kind of soft, so I decided to do that. And like I said, it really doesn't matter. You're going to kind of fill up a lot, but it just kind of gives you some different ideas of, you know, filling it in and you can, I know it's hard for you guys to see the green, but, um, and just, you're going to pile everything on top of it anyway, but it just gives you kind of a nice background. Can you move the camera a little closer? Oh, I sure can. All right. So we're going to, all right. So we're going to do Mossy Meadow. And so now I'm just going to kind of fill in places. And I like to just do a little bit on each kind of area. And I think this is good. Now, if I, once I lay things down, if I think I need to do a little bit more than I will. <coughs> All right. And this was Mossy Meadow. So we can set this aside. Now, one of the things I always try to do is I do the inside first. Just so, and I try to put your papers inside. So when you get your kits, just kind of know that this is going to go inside. That way you're, you know, if there was another white piece of paper, it could be for stamping or whatever. You're going to be like, oh no, which one? This just keeps it easier. Also take your white first. Let's add our piece and our piece is embossed. Okay. Because on the front, that's embossed also. Okay, so let me show you what I did. Take some gorgeous grape and I put it in this beautiful, can you see the image? Um, elegant eucalyptus. Then we cut it in thirds. So we cut the middle to go on the middle of the front of the card. So let me show you this one actually, so you can probably see it a little bit better. So this one goes on the middle on the front of the card, okay? And then this one was either the top or the bottom. Okay. So this one was probably the top. Okay. So, and then you have the bottom also. So you can save this for something else, right? So we're going to go ahead and take this one. And we will glue it because anything with embossing on it, I tend to like to glue instead of use tape. I try to do them a little longer just in case if this is a little shorter, I mean, all we do is, okay, let me, my, this has been a trouble for two days now, maybe three, because I think it did it on Sunday too, but I think it's, it missed me and it started thinking I'm going to just start drying up because you're not here. Or oh, I probably left the lid off. I mean, my pen out of it. All right, there we go. All right, so get your glue. And let's just put that on there. 
Okay, it's a tiny bit long, but there's a reason I do that because I hope that it fits your white paper. If this was a tad short, just cut that little tiny side off. Nobody would even know. All right, and then I took some bedazzle, just like I did, let me move this over here, just like I did right here, and I just put a little sliver on the inside. The camera's too close now, huh? All right, let me know what you guys want me to do because I have one choice or the other. I don't think I can move it in between. I'm done with the stamping now. So I think I'm, I am going to back out for just a little bit because I'm done with stamping. So hopefully that's okay. Let me know, Leslie, if you're all right. All right, so we're just going to add this on here. All right, and then we're going to trim it. Thank you, Bobette. All right, so there we go, trimmed. And now we're going to use our seal. Oh my gosh, so I showed you guys a sneak peek of next month's bingo, and I have got three out of four cards created for the class also. I'm going to be doing a class next month on Hey Chuck, so I'll tell you that now, and oh my gosh, they're so cute. I cannot wait. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this back over here, and I'm going to take these and just slide them, everything there. So I can do the inside of my card. So I like to add a layer to just kind of coordinate with the front. If you guys watch me normally, you know that. All right. Oh, I just got a notice that says one bingo left. So the other ones have all been sold. And you guys, okay, Melanie, I see your numbers. I'll write them down. All right, so that's the inside. But look how cute that is. Just adding that little bit of sparkle. Same with the front. You just add a little bit. And then, of course, we tied in the butterflies. So super cute. All right, so now... <coughs> We are going to take this. Now I like to put this, and I can see through this, but you can't, so I'm just going to move it over. I'm going to line this up, and then I'm going to line this up just because I've already done it. And I'm just going to take this so that I know we are going to do this right I'm going to do it right there. Okay, so now I have my little spot. I raise this up and then I just do it like that. So I kind of get an idea of where I'm going to put this. And now we need glue again. All right, so we're gonna do, remember this is embossed, that's why I like to use glue on it because I wanna make sure it gets in the grooves and it stays there. And there's no need to go all the way to the end because when you put it down, it'll squish a little bit. All right. So remember that when you line this up, if you are in between lines, just kind of figure out how many little dots you're down, kind of get an idea, and then you should be good. All right, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our, see how the flowers are raised I did not put a bunch of little um, dimensionals or anything there, right? What you want to do is attach them to your sentiment, okay? So what we're going to do is, and this is the fun part because I did this a while ago and I'm trying to remember exactly how I did it. Okay, this is the top and the bottom. I'm going to take my seal first and put it on here. 
Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we are going to add our leaf, okay, because it's big. So we're going to add, see how you have this bar here, and that's what the die does. The die gives you a bar to work with, okay. So we're going to put that here, and I'm going to go down right to the corner there and go right across where the bar is, and that's where this is. Okay, this leaf. And then I'm going to do the other leaf. All right, so then I'm going to take this leaf and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to go right here and then right there. Okay, so now look how cute that is. If you were to just do a card and you just added leaves on something. All right, look how cute. All right, but we're going to add more. So now I'm going to do this again because they're all on these bars, all right? Now, I'm gonna go ahead and add the purple. So I'm gonna add the purple just right in between, right here. Right there, right there, okay? Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, you can pull the, your little leaf up and put it in front if you want. I'm gonna leave this one behind just because this one's kind of in front. I'm gonna move this one right there in front, okay? Same thing, let's turn it over, do it exactly the same way. So it went to the right, so I'm gonna put it there, and or did I put adhesive on there? Yeah, I did. All right, so now you have your purple. Look how easy that is, okay? Now we're gonna go with our soft sea foam and I want this to go on top. Okay, so let's do this. Oops, hello. And let's add more seal. Uh, you know I like all the little Chad things out of my stuff. I don't like them in there. Oh, why is that one kind of, oh, my leaf is. Let's see. This one's over to the left. This one's over to the right. Uh-oh. All right, here we go. I'm going to fix it because I want my flowers to end up right. And carefully, carefully peeling. This has to go over this way because my flowers have to go up in between. There we go. See? There we go. Oh, Debbie, no worries. All right, so there's that. And now we're gonna do our green. So I'm gonna do the green. I want it to come in front of this leaf. Not this, not this little leaf right here because of the way it is, you'll see. Just lay it right there. Lay it in there. Just make sure that it aligns below on the back. Okay, so there it is, aligned with the rest. Now, I made this one go over to the left a little bit, so we're just gonna turn that part off. I wanted it to be in between there. And then you could bring this in, like we'll put the leaf behind those two, all right? So that went to the right. So this one, we've already put our adhesive, can go to the right, but I want this come in here it's just a little easier to kind of maneuver when you put it in there first all right and then we can kind of intertwine these if you want whatever bring a bring one of the leaves up in the front you know just like a flower arrangement kind of play with it now this is where those other ones went but you can't really tell right but you could add something else in there. If you have this stamp set, I would add that in there just to add, bring in that um, gorgeous grape color, but you do not have to, okay? So we're gonna set that aside because it's all kind of sticky. We're gonna bring this back in and let's add our pretty dazzling more, which I still have a ton of bedazzling, so 
it is the same color. So if you're wondering if the champagne is the same color, it is, but we also have gold in the new set. This is champagne. I haven't used the gold yet. I might use that at Christmas time. But the champagne is my favorite. This bedazzle paper, I'm telling you, I have a stack probably that big that I kept from the last time. Uh, late but happy I got to see this beautiful card made. I wasn't sure how the dice worked. You know? Oh, Katie. This is such a fun card. Um, Debbie, we haven't even done a bingo yet. We're just kind of getting started. All right. So there we go. That's nice. And now I like to do stuff here before I put it on here. I think it's just, I don't know why. It seems a little easier for me. So I am going to grab some dimensionals because I want it popped up. I kind of put a lot on here because it's layered up. It's got all these pieces on there. So this is just, I just want it to make sure it holds it really well. So um, I'm going to just really put it on there. And I'm thinking I remember what I did. I remembered I put three on the top, three on the bottom. I did not put one in the middle because of the bedazzle paper and it's embossed. So see what I mean? It gives, you're really putting your dimensionals on these two sides. So this is kind of hollow right there, which is what we want because we need to put this down the middle. I knew I put a lot on, but I was thinking I did one in the middle, but no. All right, so now we're just going to put this right in the middle. Kind of get an idea where you want it. Try to look at your sentiment and not your flowers. It needs to come down a little bit. Okay, so put that on there. Without throwing, uh oh, I think I lost a butterfly. Oh no, I think they're there. So make sure when you take everything out of the kit that all your little embellishments, I'll do the embellishments last, um, so they don't get lost. And now I'm going to do the seal. I'm going to do one across because it's just kind of heavy in the middle there. And we're going to go and put that right on here. See how easy that is? Just kind of get your colors, what you want. Make sure this is straight. And you should be good. Now, let's do our little, our butterflies. The reason I chose the butterflies is because I wanted it, oh, here it is. Oh, here's the other butterfly. It was trying to fly away. Um, you want to make sure, I kind of tucked it in there, like it's part of, you know, in there. Uh, make sure that they don't run away from you, so make sure you have them. I decided to add one here. And I did the other one like in the flowers right here. <laughs> right, Steph? Oh, that is the truth. Thank you, Melanie. Thanks, Leslie. So there you go. So the only difference, like I said, if you have this set, I would recommend adding those little purple, but I tried to make it to where you don't really have to. Um, you could choose something else. And if you have a different little flower or whatever that you want to add in there, you definitely can. So there you go. So see, I did a lot of darker right here. Um, and I did a light one right here and light right here, but it's just, you know, whatever you want, you could go over it and do a darker one right there if you wanted or one on the edge or whatever. If you did at this point, make sure you put a post-it or something right there. Um, but there you go. And then this is the inside and it's embossed. So there is card number one. So let me get this out of the way. And then I'm going to write the numbers down for those that I don't have. All right. I'm going to just kind of get a little organized. 
All right, let me write down, I'm gonna switch over to here and my paper here. Wait, it's a different paper. Okay, so right now I have Nancy and then, um, you're right, Bobette, more bling the butter. Okay, Corey. Okay, and Melanie. Mm -mm -mm. Three, nine, fourteen, twenty-three, twenty-eight. 9, 14, 23, 28. Okay, so the people that joined up tonight, so I don't miss anybody, Nancy, Lorraine, Corey, and Melanie. Right? Is that everybody? One, two, three. Yep, I think so. Uh, that card will go to someone who is really special. Yeah, Linda, you know what? It really looks like it's a lot of hard work. It really isn't. Um, if you think about it, um, so there was one, two, three die cuts up here and three down here, and they're the same die cut, so there's six. And then you're embossing one piece of paper. It's it's really, but it looks like a lot of work, right? Um, okay, so I think everybody's ready for bingo. Oh, good, Debbie, maybe you will. Now you'll have it on video, so you can check it out. All right. Is everybody ready for bingo? Everybody have their numbers? Everybody understands? I feel like it's been forever since we've done this. I'm super excited. Oh my gosh, you guys. Next month's bingo. I think Stephanie saw my cards. Stephanie saw the cards for next month's bingo. And then the cards I'm doing for the Hey Chuck class. So cute. You know how, I know you guys are crafters, so you get it how there's some days you're just on, right? You just, you're crafting and you're like, ooh, I gotta do another one now. And you do another card and then you're like, I've got it, you know, I did bingos in one day. I really, really did. And it was shocking. So it was a lot of fun. I keep stirring these up like, yay, Melanie. All right, so here we go. Let's do some bingo. Looks like everybody has their numbers and everybody's ready, so. Let's go. I know I need another jar because this one's cracked all the way down to here. I need to do new in color ones, but for now, we're still going with old because I wasn't here. So number 11. What is the date for July bingo? It is July 12th. July 12th. Here you go. July bingo. Just in case. And that way, if you go back, you can see it. And there, there's already a link below for it. It's ready for sign up too. Lots of bees, yay. 21. Twenty-one. Oh, Debbie, I'm glad. I'm gonna go a little fast at the beginning just because obviously nobody can have bingo yet. The next number is eight. bees. Oh, Gloria has B-I already and so does Eileen. Okay, why am I only showing? All right, hold on here. Oh, I think I paused my screen is why. All right, number 10. Number 10, and that's the first time that we can possibly have bingo. Number 12. Number 12. Number 13. 
Number 17. We miss you, Debbie. We hope you're doing good. Ooh, Linda has B-I-N. Eileen, B-I-N. See, Linda, good thing you didn't change your numbers, huh? Number five. So for those of you that are new, I have a small delay in between the numbers I'm calling and what I'm seeing on my screen, what you guys are seeing. And that's only because I have closed captions going and it just kind of slows it down just a little bit. <laughs> right, Melanie? <laughs> All right, more B's. Robin with a B-I, Bobette, B-I. All right, next one, 28. So of course, once we get up to, you know, somebody having B-I-N-G, then I go a little slower. And it really doesn't matter because whatever you guys are seeing, you're seeing it all at the same time. So whoever gets that number, that last number and puts bingo in, it's whoever types it in first. So it really doesn't matter about the delay. Like Eileen there has B-I-N-G now. So right now I'm just putting down the 28 on screen. So I am waiting a little bit just to make sure that that's not her fifth number. Doesn't seem to be, so I'm going to go to 22. And this is where the delay comes a little bit just because of the delay. Um, with the difference here, but I don't, I can go ahead and put the next number down because if, if she has it, she has it. Okay, number two. Number 29. So a lot of times when you play bingo, they're like, oh, bingo has to be called on the last number down. Well, we don't play that way because of the lag on the, the computer. So Bobette has B-I-N, Jennifer, yay, B-I, Olivia, B-I-N, Leslie has the B-I, Nancy and Trina both with the B-I, Jan is on the board with the B, yay. 18. The next card is a shaker card. I have a little bit of some tips and tricks to share with you on that. Go Eileen. Ooh, Gloria has a B-I-N. And Lorraine, yay. B-I for Janet. Number three. Hi, Kathy with the B-I. Gloria with a B-I-N-G, Stephanie B-I-N, Nancy Lee B-I-N. Next number is a six. Trina B-I-N and yay, Nancy's on the board with a B. Next number is a four.
Mel has a has a B B I. Yay. Corey B I. Nancy B. Jennifer B I N and Ooh Carol B I N G. <laughs> Debbie's the referee on here. Next number is a 30. Ooh, Kathy's coming up. B I N. B I N with a four. Oh, Gloria has a bingo. Let's take a look. So 30 doesn't count because Gloria called a bingo right here. So let's go here and see Gloria. A three, an 11, 18, 21, and, oh, and you did call it with a 30. Okay, and a 30. See, I'm seeing a little behind you guys. Yay, congratulations, Gloria. That's the only one I see. Yay. All right, so let me write on there. Number one, Gloria, one being go number one. So that's how easy it is. Okay, so I don't see any other ones. Kathy one, Kathy. Kathy, Kathy, let me go back up. Kathy, now Kathy has a B-I-N, but Gloria had the bingo. Okay, congratulations. Okay, good, thanks Sherry. Congratulations, yay, so all these will go back in. So if your numbers were called, that's okay. We're gonna flip these out and There we go. All right, we'll set those aside. Gloria win number one. You know what, I think I'm gonna start writing that over here. Gloria number one, so we know. So now what happens is Gloria can play if she wants to for fun, she cannot win again, okay? So that's how it works. You can only win one time. So let me move my stamps over here. Now this, ooh! Sorry about that. This card is a fan, like a shaker card. So it's gonna be a lot of fun. So here we go. Now, if you don't have this stamp set, this is the one of them that most people told me they had it. If you don't have it, you can do something with the background. You can stamp whatever you have. If you don't have these balloons, you have other balloons, I'm sure. So this one is a little bit more um, to this stamp set. Um, but I wanted to use it with the shaker and most everybody that I asked said, yes, they have it. And I just wanted to show you an easy way, fun to do a shaker card and tie it in with this set. So I just chose three colors. And so hopefully you guys have it. But like I said, um, this would make a great card. I did the balloons for you, but we're going to stamp on them. You don't have to. Okay, I'm just kind of showing you some things that you could do if you have it. You will be getting these in your set, okay? You're going to get um, a package of those for that's your gift. All right, so let's do some stamping first. We're going to get our balloons. So you're going to have three balloons in your circle. And then these you're going to set aside for right now. We are going to stamp on this. Put your embellishments somewhere so you know where they are. I don't know why I get so, oh, <laughs> excited, Gloria. Gloria's had really good luck. Um, yeah, Melanie, that will work. So you can definitely choose um, something else that you have, but you'll get all of this. So this is what your kit looks like right here to do a shaker card, and you're gonna get a package of these, okay? So I'm going to move this aside. Let's do our inside first. Um, just double checking. This is what I did. So I did the um, Azure, the uh, Lemon Lime Twist.
twist and the berry, uh, berry burst. Those are the colors we used. And so let's go ahead. Where's my berry burst? Berry burst. Oh, I'm like, oh no. That's my worst fear is your guys' packages are ready to go and I'm going to come across something that is not in there. But we're good. All right, so let's first get this down. So we're just going to add this to the bottom. I like to just add some accent color to the bottom and then we're going to do the See how long it is? I just put some long strips in there for you. I mean, you may decide to move your card sideways, but that's not why I do it. I just, if I have them like this, then that's what I do. Now what I do is I lay this down and then I just kind of, you know, bend it up right there so I can hold it. And then that's kind of where I know to put the glue. But you don't need a lot. This glue holds really well. So we're just going to lay this down. Same thing with this one. This one goes here. Okay. I'm just going to put a little fingernail print or bend it up, whatever works for you. And then I know to put some glue. And sometimes I really like putting stuff at the bottom or stamping. You know, sometimes there's those people that you just don't need to write a lot to, right? You just want to say, have a great day. Happy birthday. Stamp happy birthday right there if you want. Although we're doing it on the front. You could change that up and put something else on the front. It's your day and then happy birthday on the inside or whatever, right? All right, now we're going to take this. And you could stamp some balloons or something on the inside too if you wanted. Okay, so, so far, if you don't have the stamp set, you're still doing all of these steps because you'll get all of this. But honestly, this is really a fantastic birthday card, birthday stamp set. Balloons, all sexes, all ages. You could put numbers on them for kids, you know, if it's their birthday or anybody, really. I'm thinking of kids because I've got some kid birthdays coming up. But you could add little little numbers on there. Um, you can change the colors, make it gold and do some embossing or, or black. So the Hey Chuck class, again, will I will be using blends. But there's definitely alternative coloring. So don't stress out like, oh, I don't like blends. I don't want to use them. Um, it's okay. There's a lot of alternative things that you could be doing, right? All right, so here we go. So this one, what we're going to do is we have, oh, let me show you the stamp set. So here's beautiful balloons, and here is the die set. So you can do fringe if you wanted. You could do like tassel kind of things. You could do just lots of different things, but... If you do it as a fringe, and I've shown this before, don't go all the way down because it's not die cutting down here. So you could put, you know, do a ribbon through there. You could do a lot, a, you know, a lot of different stuff if you wanted to. Okay. Um, you've got tassels up here. You've got confetti you can make. Do your own thing. You could also stamp, stamp this and then add your tassel. But you've got stars for 4th of July. You could put a star inside of the balloon, like those clear balloons. Put this acetate, but put your star inside, like one of those balloons. Here's three balloons. I mean, there's all kinds of things that you could do with this set, which is really cool. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to take um, some of the... Ooh, you know what I just saw? I used these little stamps, but I'm going to pull this large one out because I forgot I did use that one. And I'll show you what I mean. So, I'm going to pull this out right here. Alright. And I'll show you. Silly me. Like I said, I did this in April, right? So, alright. So, we're going to take that one aside. Oh, you know what it is? Never mind, I remember. 
So what I did, this one has little um, stars on it and confetti, but you have this that has stars and confetti. It's tiny, right? But I'm gonna show you an easier way. So we're gonna do that, but let's stamp our happy birthday first. So what I like about circles is it doesn't matter. As long as it's centered, you can turn it and make it nice and straight. All right, so we're gonna... Yeah, Melanie, the fringe dye is really cool. But like I said, the stars in there for 4th of July, a lot of people are like, oh, we don't have 4th of July. Look at your stamp sets. You'd be surprised. All right, so we're going to ink this up. Look at the B and the Y. You want to make sure that's inside. Okay. So right here you want to check, and right over here you want to check. That one's pretty much in as long as these two are. So, you want to do that. Doop, doop, doop. Okay, done with this. Now, what I want to do is I'm going to bring in our balloons. So, let's set this aside over here. The balloons, I have the blue and the green are both medium. And then I have this little tiny one here, okay? Well, what I did is I pulled these out because of course it's been months since I did this and I forgot, but we don't need these little tiny ones, right? So watch this, you just take this. The first one we're gonna do is the blue. So let's take our new Azure Afternoon. Okay. Instead of taking that little tiny die and just going all over, now I don't remember if I did it straight or not, I did. And now you go like that and look your whole balloons done so you're not sitting there you know making it all oops you don't want to do that making it all fit on the balloon or you know you don't want it to double layer over each other or whatever you know done one one shot make sure you have your scratch paper underneath okay so all right, so the next one is our lemon lime twist. I'm just doing color on color. So we're going to do our lemon lime twist. Make sure I have the water off. And boom. Okay, if that happens, I would get a pokey to hold it down, get your pokey tool, and lift it up. That way you don't smudge it around. But look, yay, another pretty balloon. And that was Lemon Lime Twist. If you guys don't have the new colors, you gotta get them because they are fantastic. My favorite right now, honestly, I have been using a lot of the Pecan Pie. I, If you liked Soft Suede, you're gonna love Pecan Pie. All right, so now we have the little one. We'll just put that one right there. And Berry Burst, another one of my favorite new colors, which isn't new, returning, I should say. Same thing. Look how pretty those colors are together. You could do confetti or whatever on something. So there we go. There's our balloon. Let me just clean this off. All right. Okay. So there we go. That's that. Now. Time for this piece. All right, so we're gonna bring our colors in. We're gonna still use these three colors, all right? I'm gonna bring in my silicone mat because I like to lay this here. I'm gonna move my rhinestone, my things over. I like to lay my, my mat here because your ink pads don't slide all over and it's just a little easier because I'm gonna be doing a lot of colors. Now, this is the hard part because this is on top, okay? So we're gonna do it the best we can. So we're gonna start with our Azure Afternoon. All right, make sure again that you guys are on live chat just so everything's up to date. I don't wanna miss anything. All right, so now if you look on my streamer you're going to notice i inked right there and over 
because if we go corner to corner to side, it's going to be just that. You don't need this one over here. So if you wanted to be careful, I like to pick this up so I kind of know where I'm going. So you can pick it up and ink. You can also just ink right onto that ink pad like this. Have it down. You can see it. Just do it at an angle. So whatever works for you. And then I'm going to take this. Just kind of make sure your ink is even. And I'm going to take this and I'm going to go up to the corner and you can go over just a little bit on both sides. Okay. And ink it. And now I'm going to do it again. And now I'm going to go from this corner to over. You just want to make sure that tip goes off the page. Okay. So it looks like it's just streaming, right? So again, and so like I said, if you don't have a streamer, there's been other things that you can use. You can emboss it with a happy birthday. You can stamp it with more balloons. I mean, there's a lot of stuff that you can do with this. I'm going to go down a little farther because we need other colors on here too. Okay. And then this one to right there. Okay, so there's your blue. So again, this is azure blue, which is so pretty. All right, so that one's done. Now bring in your next color. We're gonna use the berry. No, let's use the lemon lime. I think that's where we started on the, on the side there. All right, I'm gonna just stamp that off. Same thing. This side, remember, doesn't have any edge, but this one does, so I tend to go this way. So you can do it like this and just get to that edge. It will fit in corner to corner, so just kind of be careful. Now you want to come in and know that you're going to have two more colors. So come from the corner and then go, I'm going to go down. So I'm going to go downward as far as you can, as long as it still goes to the edge, right? This is such a fun set. And then you're going to go here. And again, I'm going to go downward because I've got the berry burst that I want to do. Okay, so now we're going this way. Again, you're going to go down because you want to have room for the berry burst. And again, you're going to be off and then right down to the bottom, but you don't want to go off the page. So lift it up a bit. Okay, so there. Look how pretty that is. And you could just leave it at two colors. Right? All right, so now we're going to bring in the berry. And what, how I chose these is I looked at these. So if you guys haven't seen these in person, you will. These are little tiny. I thought they were bigger when we first saw them. Look how cute those are. Now those are just the centers of the circles, but look how cute those are. They are so pretty and they have these colors. So that's why I chose those, these colors. All right, so we're gonna do Berry Burst next. And this one we started here and this one we started here. So we're gonna do it a little different. We're gonna take and just do starting right there and up. Okay, so you you just came up and now we're going to come over. So, oops, I actually turn it this way. And now you're going to go in the gaps. So right there to right there. Okay, make sure you don't have any on your hands because there's a lot of inking on here. So here and you want to go in the middle. Okay. And 
now here and there. As long as your tips are both off, remember, you got to make it to the edge of your paper. And then this one, this one can go off. It's like the last one, but I like to show it as much as you can going off your paper. So there you go. That's how easy that was. So one from this corner, a different color from this corner, and then just kind of fill in those extra spaces. So when you're coming down, just make sure you go down, down, and down so that your last color can go just above that. I hope that makes sense to you guys. Those are beautiful, the shaker glitz. Oh yeah, they're called uh, shaker circles, iridescent shaker circles. They're so cute. All right, so that is it for coloring. We have one more thing to stamp, and I'll show you that. Let's go ahead, and we are going to adhere this to our, let me move this back over here. We're going to adhere this to here. Now, this part is going to go underneath because if you were to put the balloons on here, all right, so let's say that they're just kind of like this. And if you did that and then put the frame on it, it's really busy and you're not going to really see those balloons, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to move those off. Let's move this out of the way. And we are going to take this white square which is just a little bit bigger, okay, than that. The square is actually cut, whereas these, I did the, the stylish, where, where are they? Stylish shapes, okay? So let me show you what I did. Take your two largest, or whatever size, but I think these were the largest, and you're gonna put them, let's just say that this is this paper, and you're going to lay down your blue, your blue, you're going to lay down your squares and then just center them the best you can. Now remember that when this is done, you want this even all the way around because that's going to be a focus point on your card. So get them just where you want them, figure it out, and then put a piece of tape when you run them through. And then this is what you'll get. Okay. If you want a thicker frame, take this one out or whichever, put the next smallest in and it gives you a bigger frame. But they're both the stitched and that's how you get the rectangle with the stitch on it. This is an amazing set right here. I don't know why I only have one. I need to get another one. And I just put an order in. So I'll have to write it down. Okay, so what you're gonna do is you're going to put your balloons on here. But what you wanna do is Put your balloons like this. Remember, you're gonna have that border. I like the green to show quite a bit. So I'm gonna turn my blue this way a little bit and my green like right here. And then the pink or the berry can go just kind of down here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a pencil, 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 and I'm gonna take it and I'm gonna do, right, I'm gonna do a little, I mean the tiniest pencil dot, okay? Slide them away. Now, we're gonna take our little string. We have a little, this little guy right here, okay? You may not see it, it may not be noticeable, but it looks better than floating balloons, right? Just curious, how does everyone feel about the new in colors? I'm not crazy about them. Gloria, at first, I liked them all except, well, I shouldn't say that. The wild weed I wasn't thrilled about, I love it for the right card. Um, and 
I'm, you're going to see we're going to use um, a couple of end colors. The Pebble Path, also for the right card. Um, I, I really like them now. But at first I was like, mmm. I like the Boho Blue, but I love them all now. All right, so just find your little pencil. Start your, your dot at the top. And you can change it, okay? There's a loop there. Let's not do a loop this time. Let's go right here. But I'm gonna lean it this way a little bit. And then maybe I'll do, I don't think the loop might not fit on here anyway, so it doesn't matter, okay? So there we go. All right, so we did that. All right, so now, these obviously are going to be glued down because of the shaker, right? So let's take these and I'm going to glue them. I'm not going to use seal because I want this to dry. Okay, I don't want my... See how light I'm doing the edges? I don't want my shakers to go under, so I just kind of want to kind of make sure that that's close to the edge. And I'm going to tilt this one right about there. Okay. Then this one, I'm going to do it quite a bit on the blue because I, I don't think I did, I did it enough on here. Okay. Um, I, so I want the green, a little more green because it just pops. And with the blue frame, I just want a lot of green. So... I'm going to go down to the edge. My glue is barely coming out, so that's good. I'm going to rub it so that it's light on the edges. And now I'm going to hold it at the top because I want it to go where the string's at. But now I can kind of, before I lay it down, just get an idea. I'm going to go down a little farther just so it doesn't look like they're exactly the same. So I'm going to lay that there. And then our little guy right here, I'm just going to put him like that. Oops. And let's take a look. Okay, so that's good. I'm good with that. I don't think you need to put confetti in the background or any of that because you're going to have your shaker. Uh, last year's colors. Last year's colors. Yeah, you know what, Linda? I don't use those colors that much. I do like them, but I didn't at first, but I do now. Um, Carol, I'm with you. I'm loving all the colors now. Oh, good, Nancy. I'm glad. It, it's really a versatile set, I'm telling you. You don't need to order the shaker. Well, unless you want the whole bundle, which is not a bad thing. But um, the shakers you're going to be getting in the mail. The little shaker, two daddies. All right, we're gonna lay that right there. All right, we're gonna set this aside for a minute. Um, you're gonna have acetate like this. When you put this on, just kind of look at the dot. You know the, like this one straight up and down. So obviously it's probably falling like that. But you know, just kind of pick out whichever shade you like. Silver on one side, gold on the other. Okay, so choose what you want. I'm not, we, we didn't do any um, things that are uh, silver or gold, no gems on here. You can look at these and kind of get an idea, um, but honestly, it could be silver or gold. Um, they look a little more gold, I think, so I went with gold. Um, so it's just up to you. Now, I'm going to teach you guys something. That's funny, I don't even remember stamping that. Okay, I'm going to teach you something. Um, okay, adhesive. All right, so here is what I need to tell you about shaker cards. If you put your adhesive, you have dimensionals, you have the foam sheet, which I love, and you have your, um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, your foam adhesive strips. They, it comes in a long package. This one I just happened to cut in half. So you want to put them side by side couple reasons. Number one, 
This shaker card is super easy because they're flat. They're little circles, they're flat. You could really get away with just using dimensionals if you wanted to cut them up and put them on there, okay? But I like to have my dimensional card a little higher when you're using bigger things to go inside. Like, you know, sometimes you get little seashells or little, you know, whatever, and they're a little thicker, they're gonna not move, okay? These all move great but they're gonna not move because your acetate is too low, all right? So if you look at this, this is the lowest, okay? We're not gonna use that today, which we could, but we're not going to because I'm not gonna fuss with cutting to put them on there, but I've done it. This is thicker than the dimensionals, and this is the thickest, okay? So these are fantastic to use for shaker cards which makes sense, they're thin, they're easy to use, especially for this card. So I just want you to know um, that is the easiest thing to do. Now, what I'm gonna show you here, what I do, I like to take glue dots and I put them in the corner, okay? I'm gonna put a glue dot in each corner. All right, so take a glue dot you don't want it to be a wadded up one. You want it to be flat so everything lays nicely. But I want to put a glue dot because I'm going to use glue. But this just helps for the video and it also helps to just move your card along. And so I'm going to put these. Let me put this so it's easier to see. All right, and now we're going to take our acetate. And I honestly, I'm trying to think, did I use glue or tape? I think I used seal. So I think I did use seal. So you don't really have to do that because your seal will stick to the paper and the silicone mat, but not all over a regular piece of paper underneath it. So we're just gonna do it like this. I was thinking I used glue, but then I thought that doesn't make sense because I don't know if that's gonna hold the acetate very well. All right, so we're gonna just turn it. See how it's just going on the paper and not on the acetate? It kind of rolls up to the paper. You might have to clean the edges and we'll take care of that, but this is probably the best way. Oops. All right, so now this is really going on top of the acetate, so that's okay. All right, so now just kind of, you know, make sure that we can clean it up. Don't worry. All right, so just kind of put that like that. If you, ha I hopefully you have a silicone mat because it, I use it all the time. So we can get rid of that in a minute once it's a little firmer. But for now, I rolled it all in the best I can, and now we're going to take our acetate. So if you wanted to take your acetate on the front, give yourself an idea how much space do you have, you know, to center it. And as long as you don't see it on the outside, you're gonna be fine. All right, so let's do this. Let's get it off of the fingers. <laughs> All right, there we go. Now, gold down, because I want to see the gold, right? So, I just want to make sure it's up on the card. So, it's about halfway, okay? So, it's like right here, right before the next perforation like this, the, um, the um, stitches. All right, so we're going to just get that adhesive around. So it's not on top of your card. If you want to use glue and let it set for a while, you could do it, but for the video, I was not going to sit here that long. All right, so there's that. So we're going to set this aside. Now we're going to take this and we're going to glue, oops, let's do this, glue this on. Now what I like to do is take this glue side up, okay, so it's upside down right now. Just get an idea 
of where your card's going to go, where it's going to go on your card. And I want it to go right about there, a little to the right. And so now this is going to be smaller, just slightly bigger than the blue, right? So you can slide it under. If you want to just get it pretty exact, slide it under, right? Move that. And then you can pencil right below the lines. At least you have an idea where it's going to go, right? Now, let's just, um, yeah, we could do this. Sometimes if you use liquid glue, it's a little easier because you get a little more movement, a little, move it around a little bit, but tell me what you guys think. I, for bingo, I know bingo seems to be like, it's a long time video, right? That's a little to the right. And I knew that because I felt it on the right. I should move it over just a little bit. Um, I was thinking of not doing the insides of the cards just for you guys so time goes faster in the future, not tonight. Um, but that way you can, I'll show you the inside. And if it's something crazy, I would fix it for you. But for the most part, um, I think it's fine. I mean, you can see it. No, you, it just saves a little bit of time. So you guys let me know what you think about that. Oh, thank you, Paula. I appreciate it very much. All right, so now we're going to take these and we're going to put it on. Don't do it. Don't do it right up to the edge. Okay, I have glue right there. You don't want glue on the inside, so make sure you don't have any on your your. Um, I can tell you right now, I've got glue. Um, don't put it on. Don't have it on your inside. I think I got it on my finger. Hold on. I'm going to try a tissue because I want to see my pretties in there. So I need to wipe that off. All right, so that's good. All right. So we're going to go. You want to bring this inward just a little. You have plenty of room because I like to see the blue frame on the outside, right? And you still have plenty of room on the inside. Now, if you've seen me do shaker cards before, I like to cut on the corner, but not all the way through, so that I can turn this and glue it. I can turn it and put it down, but it's not, uh oh, gotta put it straight though, um, so that this corner stays completely put together, right? All right, so let's do this. This is a piece right here. And so I start it right here, push it up against it. And then I do a little cut right. There. Turn it. Oh, this one was too, I cut it too long, which is fine. And now I just put it up against it. This one's kind of small. You really want to cut it closer to where the corner is from over here, like I did there. All right, so there's that. And so this one, I'm just going to cut this piece, make it snug. You, want, you don't want it too snug because it will kind of bow and you don't want that. But cut it a little longer than you think so that you can just push the foam to foam. You'll be good to go. All right, so there's that. And now, before we put this on, let's go ahead and add this for glue. Let's see, um, I got sidetracked and I, oh, Angie, that's okay. 
You like doing the inside. Oh, okay, good. Okay, good. I just wasn't sure. I know there's, you know, the bingo seems like a long night. But I don't mind. I know bingo night is bingo night. And I tell my husband, that's why he's golfing. Bingo night is bingo night on Wednesday. Okay, I'll go golf. Okay. Any reason to golf, right? I'm like, you go right ahead. Okay, so now we have this. Now we have this and our sentiment. And then I'm going to bring back our little embellishments because I had to move them. And that, all right. Here's our card again. So now this is going to go on here. Now, if you made this a little crooked or whatever, it is a little smaller. So remember, you can move this over because it's smaller and you can get it to line up. So, and if it's crooked this way, just turn it this way a little bit. The paper is smaller so you can adjust. All right, so now we're gonna get these. I like to get my, uh, my embossing buddy. And I like to just barely touch this just so my little stuff doesn't cling and start flipping all over the place. So now I'm going to open this up and I'm going to take the lid and get a decent amount in. Okay, but I'm going to hold my card down with something. You want the card down so it doesn't flip all over, right? See now how it's down? Much better. All right, and I think that's plenty. One good scoop. This one has plenty of room to move around. I think I could have put a little more in this one. Because if you put it down, I didn't put that much, but it really has a lot of space to shake. Oh, not Costco tonight, Dana. He just came home last night from, um, wait, what is tonight? He came home Monday night from Montana. So... I went to Costco already because I had to get all my goodies that I needed. I've been still trying to eat healthy and do exercises. Oh my gosh, you guys. I have been doing a new exercise. I am by the farthest person from liking exercise, trust me. But I found this exercise. This lady was talking about it and I asked her about it. And so she told me and I said... I told my husband, you know what? I'm going to try it. So it is, and I am not a virtual reality kind of person at all, but it's a, it's with the Oculus goggles, and it's called Supernatural. If you guys have that, let me know. Find me and friend me, because you can friend people on there. Okay, I still have a little piece of glue right there that I just am not liking. All right, I think I'm just going to have a little glue. So be careful with your glue. I'm going to put that towards the bottom. That way, in case my sparkles can take up the space. All right, so now my head's probably in the way because I'm trying to... Anyway, it's called Supernatural. You guys can look it up on Facebook. Um, I mean, not on Facebook, but... Um, well, you're probably there too, but um, YouTube. But boy, let me tell you. And you can... You can adjust stuff to where you're just doing your arms and not your legs or, you know, whatever works for you. But, boy, I have been doing that, and it is a whole lot of fun. All right, so we're going to put these on, get our sentiment on there. I like to put three on a circle unless it is coming, you know, off of your... Thing, but it's not it's all the way down here which I should have moved that higher but I did not but that's okay we will make it work oh I should have made it higher so note to self uh, make your put your box up higher that was silly silly me but that's okay we are gonna make it work let's see I am good as long as you show us because you do such an amazing job. But if it saves you time. Oh, no, I'm good. I'll show it. My husband stays in the garage. <laughs> Mine does too a lot, Jennifer. Oh, my husband loves to golf, Catherine. I thought he might be a 
Cost Girl. Oh, Debbie, it is so much fun. All right, so yeah, I'm not liking this. Um, it's too crowded right here, but now there's no way I can move that up. So I already glued down the back piece. So I should have thought about that. Maybe when you guys get your kits, put this on first and then work your room where you're going to put it. See, that's why I do it first. That way I can make the mistakes and say, what a, what a dork. But that's okay. We'll put that there. And we'll put this one over here. I'm going to put it in this empty spot. But there you go. So we'll show you this one. Yay. Put your sentiment first. That way you guys know. Uh, try exercising in your pool. Oh, I do. It's less stress on your joints and gets your heart rate up. I do that too, Lorraine. I saw that, Marcy. It looks like fun and good exercise. Oh, yeah. I will fill you in. Shape your pieces to put in. Yeah, it's really not that hard if you just take a scoop and put them in. See, look at how cute that is. It's a lot of shaker, which my granddaughter would love. Shaker, shaker. A lot of shake. So if you put this one down, you see it goes across the bottom. And then this one doesn't have quite as much. You know, it's just a little bit more. So anyway, it's really not that difficult. But yeah, this was a boo-boo. So put this on first and then adjust that up higher. All right, that was card number two. Yay. On the supplies that I listed on the bottom, I actually just put, um, I actually, I'm trying to find where to put these things because I know I'm gonna need one of them. Um, I put the stamp sets and stuff because you guys are getting in everything. I like to find an exercise that I would like. I used to do aqua size. Bobette, I'm telling you guys all, look up on Facebook, I mean on YouTube, and look for Supernatural. It's not cheap, I will tell you that, but it is absolutely worth it. All right, bingo, bingo. Where are my numbers? Everybody take a drink. Stay hydrated. Lorraine, the problem with my pull is I go out there and I plan on doing it and then I just like move my feet a lot and I s sit on one of those saddle things. Do you use the goggles? Yes, Janet, I do. And but I but the I bought additional uh, a headset because it's way better. Um, it holds your set on really well. And they were like $40. 28 is the first number. Um they were 40, I don't know, $45, I think, but it was so worth it because it's just, instead of a strap holding on its actual headset, which is really nice. And it's a MetaQuest 2 by Oculus. But that um, is the best exercise. I love it. All right, oops. I think I get bored with walking and stuff, so. Uh, let's see, Leslie Summerall has walking in place videos. Yeah, Lorraine, I just get bored with walking. So, even outside, it's either too hot or too cold. Up here, you get spring that's, you have like winter, and you have spring, and you have summer, and then you have winter. <laughs> so, it's either too hot, too cold, it's wet, it's rainy, I don't know. Those are my excuses anyway. I guess I could say that. All right. Number nine. Number nine. You're right, Melanie. If I did, I even tried getting my grandson, but he gets too who too uh, preoccupied, and he's let's go swimming instead, which is fine. I don't mind. That's a lot of exercise chasing him around. How much room do you need to do run into furniture? Okay, so what you do is you um, map it out. When you first start it, you have a handle thing and because it's boxing and it's flow like you have these sword things that you're like lifesaver things that you're hitting things. 
Um, they ask that you have a six by six or six and a half by six and a half space. I don't need that. Mine is not that much, um, but I don't get as crazy as diehard people, I guess. But it's definitely you need a little bit of space. Okay, 23. All right, I'm going to slow down just a bit here. The walking videos are walking in place. Hmm. We have a beautiful path that um, goes in our city and it goes all over and it goes underground, like under a street and comes back up. And um, there's a lot of really, really neat uh, places. I'll measure my space, Dana, and I'll post it. Um, but it is, it is not, I don't think it's six and a half by six and a half. And I do just fine. But it also tells you, like when you're doing it, a grid will come up and it will tell you, ooh, you know, you're close on this side or this side, like a grid will, will pop up. And so you know to move back or move over. So that is really helpful because otherwise I would just go over my coffee table. All right, we got lots of B's and B-I's, B-I-N from Bobette and Melanie. 12. My arm span is six foot. And that's fine. I think that's fine because you're doing boxing in front of you. And you're mostly doing everything in front of you. There are some on the side of you. Some people online, though, when you go watch it on YouTube, get a little, a little too intense. But it is fun. It is a lot of fun. So I'll show you guys the sneak peeks of Bingo next month for those that may want to participate. Again, remember, if you can please sign up by the RSVP date, then that guarantees you a free gift in your package. Ooh, Melanie, look at you, B-I-N-G already. I'm gonna slow down just a bit. And Angie, yay. And that helps me so I can start getting the kits all ready and everything. Oh, and Steph has a B-I-N, Trina has a B-I-N, Angie. What's the name of this program for exercising? Um, it is with the MetaQuest 2 is what I have. It's an Oculus system, and the program is called Supernatural. 22. I have a lot of new people joining me tonight. Thank you so much. I hope you guys are having fun. And for all the regulars that are here, thank you so much for supporting my bingo. I do appreciate it very much. All right, next number is 29. Now I've been trying to eat better and exercise. I did Three days in a row this week already, which is huge for me. <laughs> Ooh, Trina has a B-I-N-G. I'm just waiting a bit. I want to make sure that I don't miss anybody's bingo and get too far ahead. Number seven. So we have three people, I think, with a B-I-N-G. Without scrolling back up, I don't think I missed one. Number seven. And what's fun is you have, um, I have two other friends on it and then um, we follow each other. So you can see that they've been exercising. Angela has a bingo. Let's take a look. All right, we have number three and seven. 12, 21, 
and 23. Angela, congratulations. Yay, yay, yay. All right, so let me write that. Angela is number two. Yay, I have it on my other piece of paper, but I'm just gonna write it there for, for you guys. Congratulations. I don't see any other ones. None, none, none. Nope, okay, congratulations. Woohoo! You know the drill, Angela. All right, I'm gonna try and break them up again. Oh, I put a lot of the numbers on the bottom that I, I mean on the top that I haven't drawn. There we go. All right, card number three. Yay, you guys are gonna love this one because it is with the Moody Mauve color and some of the new colors. It's got in colors. And so this is it right here. So um, I have a little trick to share with you that I didn't realize that when I made this card. So I'm going to share it with you and it will help a lot. So here is the sweet. All right. So here is the sweet, but it's nice because it's got some extra things in there. This you can put over your, your um, vase and make it look like it's got a pattern on it. This, I decided we're going to use it. And so you can make your vase a little bit bigger. Okay. And then you've got rope here if you want it. It's, you can do it in like, a, um, like the pecan pie or whatever and wrap it around. They've got lots of different things that aren't dies like the, or uh, stamps. This one, this one, this one, this one, this one, this one. So that's a lot of stuff that you can do. Okay. If you don't have this set, we are going to show you a couple different things. I did stamp this and I did stamp in here. Pull out any leaf. Um, there's a lot of those uh, Hawaiian, uh, what are those called? Um, start with an M, the plant. I mean, you could put any kind of, you know, plant or, you know, um, thing there if you want or you could just take um, a piece of paper if you have uh, the Moody or the this is the pebble I believe well, let me double check yeah I'm sure it is and then you could you know make that what you want I'm gonna grab a piece just to make sure that's what that is like I said I did these in April so yeah pebble pack so it's almost a, a dark gray, so it's kind of nice. Yeah, the palms, anything. You can put, you know, whatever you want. This is the one I'm going to teach you a little bit about because I looked in the catalog and it looked like it was this, like they didn't separate the leaves. But when you do that, you, you it's kind of hard to fold because you've got up and down on the same little, this little guy. So you're up and, up and down this, up and down this without trying to tear this. Well, we're gonna do something different. A flower or something else on your, exactly, Betty. You could do, you could do solid color instead of the DSP. I use the DSP with the set, but you could use a solid color and stamp, flat, emboss it. Can you imagine embossing this with something small and just, you know, like I used the brick um, where did my embossing folder? I was going to show you. That. I used the this new exposed brick. If you can see, look how pretty that is. I love anything like this. But you could use that on, you know, or any a floral or anything to to do some embossing on those if you wanted. I used this on here, and of course I love this DSP, so I thought I would use it. And so see how this fern is right here? It's perfect in the wild wheat because it just gives it that natural kind of look, right? So let me just put this aside, move my stamps up here, what we're gonna do, and here's your kit, okay? So let's open it up, be careful of your embellishments, all your goodies, we'll just move those up there, okay? 
these came from these, which are kind of one of my new favorites. I've been using these a lot. The In Color Dots, 23 to 25. I've been using these a whole lot. So um, you'll see those a lot. All right, so let's move everything from the top over. Let's do our inside. So we're gonna stamp, we're gonna take this off, turn it over. All right, so let's go ahead and stamp our fern. I like to bring again my silicone so we can put our ink right there. All right, so we're gonna take this. So if you look on the inside, I did two of them. Okay, one up high, and I both did them both dark because I don't want it to look like, you know, they're 3D-ish. I want them to be nice and dark. So I'm going to do that one up high, and I'm going to turn this one a little and kind of just do it right there. Okay, so we have our pretty inside. Now, what I did on this is I did add one in here, so you don't have to do that. If you don't have the die, you're going to have to fussy cut it, which we'll do. I have a die, but we'll fussy cut it just because you may have to if you don't have this stamp set. All right, let me grab a baby white here. And it's really easy to cut, so no big deal there. All right. But if you look at the stamp set, look at it, it even has that texture. And it even has texture on here, so you don't have to use paper, right? And then you've got stuff like this that you could just add, you know, and then you, of course you have the, the die sets to that. So, um, so that's good. So now our stamping is done except our sentiment. So we'll bring that in. And it's your thought, let's see here, let's look right here. We have thank you, which is kind of cool. It's got a little bit of a different font. You always know just what to do, what to say and do. Obviously, you can change your sentiment to use whatever is handy for you and what your card might want to be. With gratitude, a nice, that's a nice thank you card. Uh, your thoughtfulness is much appreciated. You are proof there is good in the world. A really nice set. A nice just thank you card. Show appreciation. All right, we're going to pull this down. Again, this is in the stylish, uh, stylish, I always want to say design, stylish shapes. All right, so just pretty much side to side. Again, look at the bottom line because it's nice and straight. All right, so there we go. There's that. All right. Let's close up this so we don't have a catastrophe. All right, so let's just fussy cut this. So I, I've already did all this for you with your embossing and everything. So let's just cut. It's going in the vase so you can do them shorter, longer, whatever. And I'm just gonna come up. Now this is my, what I would do is come up and then I would just kind of go in and out. It doesn't have to be every tiny branch, but you know, just kind of give it a little a little wiggle and I'm going to come around and I don't go all the way down but I do give it you know a little bit of that shape all right so you can just I mean it does not have to be exact by any means but just by wiggling some little dimension a little bit of like texture looking on there see it it just kind of makes it look like it's like that all right all right so there we go quick and easy so no die or not, um, and you can stamp, like I said, anything you want. Did anyone see the Spanish and translation of the same set today in Sarah? Oh, yeah, they offered a different, you know, a set, which they're trying, trying it out to see if, you know, we can get 
sales and more people that are interested in that, which would be nice. All right, again, I'm using liquid because I want to make sure that this stays down. And embossed images, my glue is just being, there we go. Right, so I'm just going to put that down. Okay. Oh, oh, you know what? I forgot to do the inside. But see how I all of a sudden I was thinking I did something wrong, but I just forgot to put this in. I was thinking I used the white paper for the inside, and I forgot to finish this part. that is though it just looks kind of rich kind of you know elegant all right and we're going to put that on the inside but any of those sentiments too you could do the outside and inside there's some really really nice ones but these two colors look really nice together so these are those in colors so hopefully you guys like them. Thank you for sharing the wiggling tip. Oh, you're welcome. <laughs> I, I'm not a big fussy cutter, but I'm going to tell you that a lot of times when I fussy cut, it actually ends up that I really like the project a lot. So I'm kind of like, oh, you know what? This is not bad. Okay, so your vase is gonna have a little base at the bottom. So you'll see, let's see if you can see it. The, the, it has like a little lip thing on the bottom. That's just the base. And the top kind of is just, has like a little bit of a, um, um, it's just more flat on the top. So the base is right there, okay? So we're gonna put this one really close, but I'm not gonna glue it yet. What I want you to do is look at this one and, and you can decide which one you like to do this is the one i told you that it looked like in the catalog that they left it like that and they folded it and that's why i did it like that i was like oh i guess that's the way it goes well then i said you know i'm gonna cut it and cutting it is so much better the thing about cutting it is you're gonna have and i'll show you right here you're gonna have those little pieces. So I'm gonna cut as straight as I can. Okay, so you're just gonna cut those little pieces. See how it, it separates? But once you fold it, you'll see what I, I'm talking about that you need to fix. I do it really as straight as you can because you don't want to cut into your your leaf there. Okay. Now what I did is I just took my nail, but you can, you know, take whatever works for you. You don't need to do it all the way to the bottom, so, you know, be careful of that. You don't want to rip it. So I just use my nail, but you could use, you know, your bone folder or whatever you have that works. And I did it like this. Go all the way around, but see how the edges, let me see, hold on. Um, okay, see how the edges have like the little pieces where I clipped, so once you get this all folded, and I guess you could do it before, but it probably have been easier, but I wanted to show you, is go down the edge and trim that off, but be really careful. Go outward a little bit, because you want to make sure it's actually easier when it, they're folded, because see, they're, they're kind of in right there, and I don't want to snip the other one. So just do this. And then go back. Yes, I'm pinching it. So I'm folding it and then I'm just pinching it. 
So I put my nail in the center because there's a, a score line and then I just pinch them up, okay? And then it will just feather out. But by the time you cut these little pieces right here that are sticking out, be really careful you don't get your other leaf. And I just kind of go outward. So you want to cut it, but go outward. And if you see a little bit, I guess it's not a big deal. It kind of just looks like your leaf has, you know, got something going on. But I'm just cutting those little tiny tips off. It just is much better looking once I cut those off. So just kind of push the one leaf up and just cut those little tiny, they look like they're thorns or something. That one looks not bad, this one. And I would just look down your scissors, make sure you're not going to be cutting your next leaf. That one looks okay. I mean, you're barely cutting anything off, but now look how clean it looks. Oh, it's probably better if you see it like that. See, it looks much cleaner when you, when you uh, clean that off. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to put our leaf like this. So let's bring this back in. I can show you. I, want it, I wanted it kind of sideways a little bit, so my stem, you could, you know, turn it once it's glued. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop this up just right here in the middle for now. And so I'm going to get a dimensional as soon as I figure out what I did with them. There they are. All right, so we're going to take a dimensional and put it right here in the middle. And I'm going to take this and I'm going to put it right about there. Now remember, your card base is going to be kind of hung out a little bit more. So that's fine. You can do it like that. Now that I've cut these apart, I can actually put glue under these and lay a couple of those down. Okay. So, oh, my dog is going crazy now. So I'm going to flip this over and just put a little bit after I wipe this off. And to put a little bit of glue right there, right like just a little on the tip, you know, on the um, concave, you know, in inward pieces that are going to touch the paper. And I should have done this ahead of time, but it's all right. So, and now I'm going to just barely hold that down for a second. You don't really want to put a block on it because they're too light, but I can put this on it for right now at the top. Now we're going to take our vase and see, we can just move this. You can cut it, but it doesn't really matter. Um, we're going to, I'm just going to put some adhesive because it doesn't matter. We're just kind of holding it in place and we can still move it, but we're going to put our vase right about here. So that's sticking up. Okay. So let's, and this is going to go down. So I'm just going to do glue again. It's going on our embossing folder. So I want to make sure that it's going to hold. And I'm going to have it kind of close to the side because we got a lot going on here. And you can move your stem over. Move it over a little bit. If that's what you want. Okay, there we go. So that one's down. All right, so these should all be down. All right, so that's good. Uh, this is going to be fun to play with this die set. Oh, yeah, it's a lot of fun. All right, so now the next thing I did, see, I did one and I tested it out. And that's where I wanted to see if it was working. Now, we're going to have this and we need to find, what did I do? Oh, boy. Oh boy. Well, heck. I know you guys saw it, that little brown piece, this one. Oh man. Where did it go? You guys see it?
I know I have it. I saw it. Well, I'm going to cut another one because I don't know what happened. I happen to have a piece right here. So we'll just cut one out. I will double check and make sure that it is in your kit, but I swear I had it because I saw it. All right, well, we're just going to, it's probably stuck to something I picked up. All right, so let me die one, die cut one really quick. That's funny. Did you guys see what I did with it? Oh, yeah, Jennifer. So it'll give you a good head start and that oh oh my gosh okay speaking of that paper one of the cards that I made for bingo next month is with one of those papers and that's all I'm going to say and it has nothing to do with the stamp set and my upline I showed her my cards and she said that was her favorite one so um it is a great I, I mean I'm pretty proud of myself it was a pretty good card all right, so now this is kind of cool because you can make it tall or go down and make it shorter, okay? And I liked the look of this, so, you know, you can make it tall or short. This one we made short. Let's see. Let's make it as short as this one is. So I didn't go all the way down. I just went down. Okay, so I went down right where you can kind of see it starts to come out, and that's where I stopped. So let's do that. Gosh, I don't know where it went. I'm trying to look to see if you guys saw it anywhere. That's weird. All right, so we're going to take this and move it down just a little bit. You can kind of tell because the edges of the lid, not lid, but, you know, the handle part stops. It aligns up. So you want to do that. We are going to put dimensionals here. Right towards the bottom, and this one towards the bottom, and then I'm going to put them towards the top and over here towards the top. All right, because we can cut those down where you don't have to have them sticking out, right? So we're going to put this one just kind of right there. We're going to bring this in right here, and then you're going to bring this in. And you can plop this underneath. You can put it over on top. I kind of like it like this so you can see all of that. But it's whatever you want. These are barely glued, so I can tuck them in and then put that right there. All right, so that is, those have embellishment or uh, dimensionals also. Except I lost my mini dimension. Okay, there. All right, so we're going to put... Put dimensionals. I don't have to go all the way to the end, but I like to put them towards the top so that they kind of gives them some stability. So we'll put that one there, one in the middle, and the rest really doesn't matter because it's um, kind of down in the pot. I would go down just one more though. All right, so there's that. And then this one is done, and this one is glue. So let's do our glue. We're going to go just down the middle. All right. We're going to place our pot right here next to it. I'm going to push it down at the bottom. It lifts up. And then just kind of go down in and lay that right there. Okay. And then this one, let's take these off. So notice I have not put the pot down yet. Again, we're going to go right about right here. And we're going to just slide this under these two. We're going to bring that back up right about there. And... You can go under these leaves if you want, but we'll fix that. Let's do the top one first. I'm 
Okay. And then this one, you can just kind of lift those up if you want. And now let's take these off. So I just kind of arrange it, whatever you like. Thank you guys so much for the thumbs up. I really do appreciate it. All right, so this, we're going to just put this right here. Okay, I'm going to move this one over a little bit. This one over. There we go. All right, so there's that. And now let's put our embellishments here. You don't want to go all the way to the edge because you're going to put it up over. So give yourself some room right there. And so just kind of go tuck it up right up against it there. All right, and then get your embellishments in. These are the copper ones, so it kind of pulls in that copper. So I'll put one here. I'm going to put one. I found a little flat spot, so kind of find where your flat spot is on your embossing. It'll be a little easier. And then put one there. If you feel better putting the panel on before you, um, you know, add all of this stuff on there, that's fine. I just like to do it, most of it, before I put it on. Like normally I would do the embellishments and everything on the card, but it's whatever you want. All right, so there you go, card number three. So I like this card. It's very um, general. It's not like flowers. It's not, you know masculine but it's just a really nice you know welcome to the neighborhood thank you for watching my house while i was gone you know whatever um so just a really nice card this still has glue on it so you can and you could move it over you know a little bit you can pull this up because it's only okay so i moved it over a little bit just move your little prongs to go okay and then I'm going to take this glue off right here. There. So now it just looks like it's a little to the side. So it's whatever. Whatever you guys like. Thanks, you guys. So I'm glad you like it. So, yes, these are in colors, but some sometimes the colors just make it work. But I need to look. I need to write a note. Number three, the top of the pot because I swear it was in there. Okay, so this is lifting up a little too much for me, and, and maybe I did do it on the other one, but I would just add, take your little dimensional here, your little mini one, and just slide it right here, and then just push down. There, now it's nice and secure. Okay, so look at the difference in the fans. I just really like this one, and it's so much easier. So, good. I'm glad to thank you, Ramona. Thank you, Diana. I'm glad you guys like them. So, that was card number three. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Okay, at the end, you guys have to tell me which one's your favorite, okay? So, the last one is a gift card holder, and it could come in handy. Oh, but, but let's do bingo first. I'm getting all excited over here. Now you know there's a gift card holder coming. All right, who is ready to win bingo? On your list, good Dana. Thanks Deborah. All right, gotta close my dice before I lose them. All right, here we go. Bingo, bingo, who's gonna win this one? I gotta get a drink. No one's going to win this one. I do too. The paper is so pretty. All right. Number two. Oh, Barbara, I I love it. I think it's a, such a fun, a fun card. The paper's gorgeous. Um, it's a really cool set. They, even the texture and the stamps are really cool that you could use different colors and Make it look completely different than the paper. All right, Melanie's husband. 
You know, he could play too, and then both of you would have a chance. Just saying. You guys should have seen my husband on the cruise. It was so funny. He was just astounded. He, he was astonished about what Stampin' Up! was all about. I mean, he knew. I've been stamping forever. But I think he was, he was really impressed with them, I should say that. Not just our cruise, but... 29. So 2, 12, 24, 29. All right, we got a bunch of bees going. Number four. I still don't know where my top went. That's why I think I must have dropped it or it stuck to something. Or I'll be cutting out tops tomorrow when I'm doing the postage. Kylie said <laughs> he was. <laughs> Kylie and Bruno, I, I've been saying this forever. They were amazing. We had so much fun with them. And same with Janet Wakelin and her husband, Doug. We had a fantastic time with them. But yeah, Bruno, oh my gosh, Kylie and Bruno were so fun. They are just like they are on the screen. So fun and so nice. All right. Right, Deborah? I agree. Because sometimes he's like, you're in there all the time. Blah, blah, blah. He doesn't complain. I mean, he knows that how busy I am. And that I'm constantly either doing class or doing bingo. Class or bingo. Class or bingo. You know, so I'm always in here creating and prepping a lot of prepping i i kind of wish i had more creating but i've got some ideas to where i can maybe get in two classes a month i want to try number five but anyway he uh he was impressed of course our disclosure that we have to say which i understand is uh that we have to say that we are less than one percent of stamping ups um, group and I think we have either 57 or 59,000 demonstrators I don't remember but less than 1% are in the cruise and my little spill after that is I think anybody can it's just a whole lot of work but um, I don't want it to I don't like when it sounds negative like oh people can't reach that because they sure can it is just a lot of work Okay, number six, and I'm going to slow down. I see some B.I.s on here now, Lorene and Bobette. I'm going to slow down just a bit. But yeah, we had just an amazing time. It did take me a long time to catch up. I didn't get sick. I heard other people got sick. I did not get sick. Thank goodness. I even tried escargot. Ooh. One and done. One and done. If you guys haven't had escargot, it tastes like a salty mushroom. I mean, it has it has garlic and onion and butter. You know, it's got a good, I don't know. The flavor's okay. It's the texture. You don't even know. It's, it really does taste like a mushroom. Well, I had no idea that there were that many demonstrators. Yeah, there's a lot. That's everywhere. That's Australia, the UK. I think it's 57,000 or 59. I, I have the numbers. I just don't remember. But, of course, you know, at the cruise, they talk about it. And so, seven, or 11 and 20 are the last two. Yeah, Gloria, it was okay. You like it, Olivia? I mean, the flavor is okay. To me, it's just like a soggy mushroom. And normally, texture doesn't bother me. But, ooh, it, it was, I, I asked him ahead of time. I said, is this like a soggy mushroom? And he said, yeah. And I said, all right. So I prepared myself. But mm, I'll pass. Give me the lobster. And I didn't have a lobster. You know what? 
They add lobster, like you can choose it to, um, number three is next. You can choose it as an add-on to any of the meals in the dining room, right? And you, you pay for it now. It's They used to have lobster night or you could get lobsters, you know, however many you want, whatever. They don't do that anymore. But um, the lobster, yeah, it's like, a, yeah, it is like, a, and I love mushrooms, but for whatever reason, <laughs> If they would have said those were sauteed mushrooms, I probably would have been fine. Number 30. So 3 and 30 were the last two. And the, um, but the lobster night, I think every night we had such good food. And then the one night that I went with the director to eat at a different restaurant, everything was fantastic. So I didn't even add a lobster because I didn't think I was gonna be able to eat all that food for one, but um, everything was so good. Ooh, Nancy, look at you, first time. Is it your first time? I don't remember. I'm so bad about that. Yay, Nancy has a B-I-N-G and so does Corey. Yay, okay, 18. Eighteen. Now I'm just slowing down a bit to get caught up so that I don't miss anybody's bingo. And Gloria and Lorraine. Remember, first person that hits it gets the $100 shopping, and the second person gets consolation. Oh, and I have a giveaway tonight, so I got to pull that out. Remember, I'm going to do a drawing. Oh, I'm going to grab that while you guys are doing this real quick. I forgot. Got it up. I'm glad I remembered that. Sorry about that. Okay, next number 22. 22. All right, Stephanie B. I. N. I still have her. Or 18 up on the screen I think it might be the delays also because I had to go back and look at my email and that kind of messes up my YouTube for whatever reason makes it a little slow all right 22 has been up for a bit now so I'm gonna go with 27 27 Ooh, I'm all excited. You guys are all so close. All right. I'll wait until 27 comes up on the screen for you. All right, Robin, B-I-N. Leslie's on, B-I. Janet, B-I-N. Oh, I got some B-I-N. Lots of B-I-Ns coming up. Olivia, Leslie. All right, next one. Number one, who will be the one? So don't forget at the end, we're gonna do a drawing for those that played bingo. And also, uh, next bingo, I'll review that and show a sneak peek of it again. Ooh, now Robin has a B-I-N-G. All right, here we go. Number 15. Ooh, lots of B-I-N-G's. Ooh, this is going to be a one everybody's on. I just put the next number in, number 15. Ooh, 
Dana's on, Leslie's on. Wow, Kathy. All right, shake it up. Here we go. 16. 16. Ramona, it is. And the next bingo is linked below if you guys want to do um, July. And I'm going to show you a sneak peek. Ooh, Barbara. All right, I put the next number up. I'm just waiting, waiting for somebody to start. As soon as you guys start commenting. Oh, Nancy got it. All right, let's take a look. Nancy. 25. 3, 30, 16, and 20. Congratulations, Nancy. That's awesome. So Nancy, let me write it down here. Number three. I'm going to mark you on here. Number three. Congratulations. All right, nobody else? I don't see anybody. Yay! Congratulations, Nancy. Great, whew, that's good because there was only a few left. That was a long one. Remember you guys a few, a few months ago and somebody got it? Was it you, Leslie, that got it like in six numbers or something? It was crazy. Congratulations. All right, to our last card, I need to pull a stamp set that I put back. What did I do with it? Hmm. There it is. Again, Pebble Path we're gonna use. Now this was immediately what I thought about when I said, let's do our, the in colors. So we're gonna do some in colors again. But we're going to make a happy Father's Day. Now, you, if you don't have a Father's Day, anybody to give one to, I get it. I completely get it. But um, you, you can change this, okay? So we're going to use the Gone Fishing. All right. It wasn't Leslie. It was somebody. It was really quick and fast. But anyway, um, good things come to those who wait. You can turn this if you need to. And put something different. So glad you're my dad. Happy retirement. Perfect to have on hand. And you could do like a little gift card. So this has just a little card in it. But you could add another piece of DSP here. But just glue it here and across the very bottom. And you can slide a gift card in here. So there's lots of things you could do. Okay, so this you could. This is glued here in the back. Um, just on the sides. So you could put, let's see if this will fit in the back. You could, no, this is a little big, but if you made it smaller, because this goes, you know, all the way on the inside, you could do that, but you could do a smaller one here. You could stick the gift card back there. They're going to feel that it's still, you know, uh, um, thick. Something's in there. So happy Father's Day. Happy retirement. Congrats. So glad you're my dad. Good things come to those who wait um, you know, waiting and, um, or wait for your fishing kind of thing. It's not waiting. I think that's waiting with a D, but anyway, lots of fun stuff. We didn't do a lot with the stamp set other than the, the, okay. So here's another thing we did this, but if you don't have the set, you really don't have to put that if you don't want to. Okay. So you could put anything there. You could put, um, there's other, guy stamp sets that you could add a little something so um, but this stamp set is super cool because this you can make it look like a tackle box and put little things you know all kinds of things in this is a water you know kind of a die that gives you that water look there's all kinds there um or use a glue dot yet yeah, use glue dots and hold it down on your paper that's right nancy you could um, so there's all kinds of stuff that you can do to kind of change this up so um, let's get started. So this is your kit you're going to get.
All right. So I will use this right here to just go around this, which is the rope. Okay, so you can put this on the rope. Well, I think my hubby's back. All right, so let's do the first thing. Let's take, and you're going to get different color bags, okay? So the whole set is all the end colors. So I don't know what, what color bags anybody's got. It's going to just be you get you get uh, one. Well, these are the, the treat bags, okay? So you just fold them up. So we're going we're gonna, to um, glue that in a minute. So let's start with this. Move our tiny pieces. There's lo lots of tiny pieces, so be careful. We are going to take this. And look at you can even do the brown checkered the if you want it. This is the um this is the copper, I believe. This is the wheat. I think this is the copper. Um or this is pecan pie, actually. Because it's on the DSP. Alright, so just go down. All right, and this goes on the top, remember? So just kind of look at your images. I'm gonna do, there's a lot of hooks going this way, so I'm gonna do it this way. And just put that across the top. And right across the top. Again, it might be just a tad long, just come in and trim that. Okay, so there you go. If there's glue, just, it'll rub right off. The seal just kind of I went over a little bit. Okay, and if you have one of those gummy racers, that works great too. Um, let's see. All right, so there's that. Let's get the glue off. All right, so that's gonna go on the inside. So let's go ahead and do our adhesive right here. Okay, you don't have to worry about the adhesive because your paper is not going on the inside here. That's why you need a smaller card if you did that. But if you do this, and then it's going to go in the bag, and that doesn't change the bag size at all, right? So we're going to put that right in there. All right, so it matches all these pretty colors. So when I saw this color here, this is the first thing I thought of is the fishing set. I have a lot of fishermen in my family, so this just worked out really, really nice. For this, I'm going to pull in, as soon as I find it, my, oh, here it is, oh, right in front of me, my mat. Let's do this and do my stamping. I'm going to do Happy Father's Day. I did use the pebbled pack because it does match. All right. And we're going to use, let me pull out all my dies here. And this is Pebble Path. So you can see the difference right here. Well, maybe you can't. This is Pebble Path and this is the gray, the um, basic gray. So there is a difference. All right, so we're gonna do, you know what? I'm gonna change this to retirement. Just because I have a Father's Day, no, I'll do Father's Day. I've got two Father's Day to do, so three Father Father's Day. So let's do Father's Day. I don't know anybody retiring yet, so I mean, not soon. They either have or not yet. All right, so we're gonna go right. Look at your father's, cause that's the straightest. Hopefully, I did it straight. Okay, and then we'll set that aside. All right. I'm not missing anything here. Okay, now we're going to switch over to our gray. Now, if you don't have this stamp set, I gave you a little white piece. If you wanted to try and color it or do whatever you want to do to try to get that to um, work out, um, give it a try, but it, I tr I don't know if I saved it. I did do one. It didn't come out so pretty. No, I didn't save it because it was like, well. But like I said, put something else there. And then this trim here, 
um, just so you know it's the natural it's called wavy trim okay and that is is that the one I think from the elegant set all right so I'm gonna try it if you don't have this set but I'm gonna try and just do it this way just because I do have it but I did give it to you just so in case you wanted to try and so I'm going to take the gray now I obviously would normally stamp first and then die cut it out and if you have the stamp set obviously that's how I would recommend you do it but I'm just gonna try it that's a little off but that's okay it is what it is so that's how you would do it you would do the silver or gray whatever you have and then I brought in real red but again I if you don't have the stamp I would recommend using whatever else you have that's masculine that you know might go with the fishing there's other fishing sets that might have a net or you know whatever even a fish if you have the paper even if you did the paper share cut it cut one of the fishes off and stick it there so I I put it in just in case but you don't have to have that all right so there's that let's go ahead and glue that's all this the stamping we need so let's go ahead and glue our our rope here just to it to add just a little bit of something something and so what I did is I added it on the back. So add it. I made it plenty long enough for you to wrap it around and then glue it down. Okay. Now that I did not pop up. So what I do is I do go over that. And I go over this just to make sure it doesn't go anywhere. And I know that this is embossed, but I'm using this adhesive. Um, it's pretty flat on the back. And I didn't think I'd have any issues with it. So, And I'm going to do everything on here. I don't know why. Just sometimes I tend to think, oh, this one I could just add on. The lines really do help you make it straight. All right, so there's that. All right, now this little guy, this lure, his little, um, the scales are going to go this way, okay, like a fish. So you're going to think this is a fish going this way, and then this is the end, okay? So you want the scales to be down. So what I did is I took a glue dot. And I put it right above the little hole at the bottom. Okay, so that's the bottom. And then I'm going to take this teeny tiny hook. And I'm going to go in. And then just pinch it. So it looks like your hook's at the bottom. And then it's going to be on the back. And we're going to put a dimension along on that so it'll stay. All right. So we cannot worry about that. But then you're going to have this little piece, and this is just like that little extra support so that it doesn't break or anything. So what I did is you're going to make sure that this hole is poked out. And then I'm just going to put glue right here. And so you're going to put a little bit right here and a little bit at the tip. You don't want to put too much because you don't want it oozing all over. But you want it, so I would grab your tweezers if you have them. Can you imagine doing bingo right now, like having your kits and doing it? That's why I like to do it like this. So you guys can watch, learn by my mistakes, like that shaker card or... I should have been paying attention. But that way you can have it all planned out. 
So when you get your kit, you'll be ready to go. All right, you want to line up those two little circles. All right. And then the, oh, you know what? See, this is another good reason. Thread number four. I had it out, but I think Stephanie was helping me put things together, and I think I forgot to tell her that we need to add thread. So I put a little piece of thread. Oh, I didn't use that. You know what I did? I took this. That's why it was in here. And I took a piece of this so it's the same color because I'm kind of crazy like that. You can take this and then I just took a piece like this and I used all of that however many pieces and then you're going to take this and you're going to put it inside your lore. And then you're just going to, I didn't do a fancy, you know, double threading thing or anything. I just kind of put it on there like that. And then I went under this over here. Okay, leave it long for now. Just kind of leave it there until let's put our sentiment on and then we'll fix all that. All right, so this, let's put our embellish, I mean our dimensionals on. I like to put one in the middle when it's bigger so it doesn't sink in, all right? All right, so you're just gonna go right in the middle, right like that. Now, your dimensionals at the top are probably going to go right on that rope, which they did. So what I do is I take a glue dot, just in case, just for extra, and I just put it right underneath that rope in the middle there where there isn't a glue dot, I mean a dimensional, just to kind of hold it down in, in place so that this doesn't end up flopping, just in case your dimensionals just go to your um, little rope. And then that way you have that extra. All right, so now we can go ahead and tie this. So I'm going to bring it up, both of them up like this, and then I'm going to tie. This, like this, that was my husband. He just came home and showed me what he got from Costco for dinner. <laughs> he bought shrimp cocktail, yay. All right, so I'm gonna pull that tight and then I'm gonna just trim this because we don't need it that long. All right. But now, so I need to add your little thread in there. And then we have this little doohickey my bobber, which I'm guessing is some kind of a fishing allure thing again. And my husband was telling me all these things on like, oh no, this goes like this, this goes like that. Um, Stephanie, thank goodness, caught my lures because they were upside down. And uh, he said, yeah, that's wrong. <laughs> like, oh yeah, I, I got that. Both of our husbands like to fish, so. And I know Olivia, they like to fish too. All right, so we're going to put our glue dot right there. I mean, our dimensional. And then I'm going to put this right on the dimensional. And I'm going to add a little bit of glue right on top of that, except I just put them on upside down. So we're going to take it back off and you, then you wipe the glue off and then you turn it over and you put it right there the right way on top like this, just kind of hang in there. And this could not be how these go. I don't know. I didn't ask him that. I should have asked, is that little lure thing? And I don't know if it's a weight or what it is. Olivia, do you know, is this a weight? But anyway, I'm putting it on there like this. And, oh, I don't need to do that. I need to add glue. 
We're gonna add a little bit of glue right there. We're gonna add this dimensional down here. So you can bring your little rope closer and then just kind of stick your lure there. And if you if this bothers you, you can tuck it. It doesn't bother me because look how cute that is. It's just it's just hanging there. It's fine. So I just leave it there. But if it bothers you, you can you know tuck it back here or tuck it behind your sentiment. It doesn't matter. And then we've got our little um, bobber thing, and it's going to go on top of that. So you put your dimensional at the bottom, and then I put a little bit of glue right there. And then we'll just slide that over there. So whatever you have, a fish from your paper, something from your other set, whatever you've got will work fine. I try to include everything that you need, but sometimes just to finish the project, it's like, oh, I got to have that on there. So I gave it to you. And really, you could do, um, you know, cut a piece of red paper and just put it on the bottom half. And you might have a little Christmas ornament that size. I don't know. But anyway, sometimes there's things you just kind of need to add. And then hopefully this entices you enough to think, ooh, I could do that for lots of other stuff like the retirement. This is a great set for the retirement. And you could just add that on there. Or, um, you know, fishing is such a great masculine card because... Fishing is so, I mean, even female, male, everybody likes fishing. Well, not everybody likes fishing. I don't like putting the worms on the hook. I don't mind sitting there and enjoying myself, hoping for a fish. But anyway, um, so I thought this was really cute. You could use the same idea with these envelopes with any of, you know, other paper that match these and create something else, even a birthday. Now, see how this kind of sinks in right there a little bit? I'm going to put another dimensional. Now, if you get crazy like I did, you could, let me get my dimensional, you could uh, sit here and open up the little, oh, now look at it, I just did it upside down. <laughs> look, my scales are upside down again. Oh, well, I'm going to give this to somebody who won't know the difference. Darn it, I just was telling you guys what way they go. All right, so this is wrong. All right, that looks better. See, this is, <laughs> oh, I did this on purpose. These are correct. This is not correct. So I will fix it, but um, I don't need to fix it here and bore you guys, but I will take it off. But when I take it off, I, the one thing I will show you is use your scissors, especially on delicate paper, and cut your dimensional, okay? Cut. And this one's glued, but I'm going to take it off quickly, I hope. Okay, so that's glued. So we're going to cut this. I'm not going to show you the whole thing, but I definitely want to show you how to try to fix it. So I need another piece of string, which is fine. Okay, and now I'll need to take some of this stuff off, which is fine. So I will fix it. <laughs> Oh my gosh, I can't believe I just did that. This is what you don't do. All right, so yay, done. Look how pretty it came out. All perfect. So anyway, a great set. Anytime you can find these treat bags, they are great to do um, little gift card holders. They are super, super nice. Um, you could put a little tag on there if you wanted. You could do like a little, like this congrats right here. You can do a congrats on paper and then just add the little tag on the front and the little tag on the back and then pull it up. Like, I know here I am going off topic here, but look, you could, oh, that's not a tag. Well, anyway, you could do a tag that just po pokes up just a little bit and that way it says congrats and you can just pull it. But anyway, there are all kinds of different ideas you can do. But, oh gosh, I can't believe I did that. Exactly, Kathy. Hopefully they'll, we'll get some Christmas um, bags of some kind because these are so great um, to do cards with. But anyway, 
uh, to do a gift card. Yay. So you guys saw all the projects. Before we do the last bingo, let me show, because I know some people might skedaddle. Um, July bingo sneak peek. There you go. Quick, easy. Look, look, look. Okay, goodbye. Uh, July bingo is the 12th of July. You can click on the link below. Um, I'm kind of changing it up just a bit to say that if you are SVP, you will get a prize because I've got to have time to, to get the prizes and get them shopped for and get the cards and kits made. And it is just way easier if it's done by that day because that really, I said the fifth, that really gives me a week to get everything prepped and done and ready to go. So hopefully you guys are, you know, that works for you guys. Um, let's see, Linda, I would never have known it was upside down. I know, but the men I would give it to, they'll know. Uh, me either, Linda, I can, I can believe it. I know stuff, right? Thanks, Nancy Lee. Um, uh, I can't believe it. <laughs> okay, well, anyway. <laughs> All right, let's do our last bingo. Yay, yay, yay. Oh, I wanted to look really quick. Um, let's see. What was I telling you about on here? Oh, see the top left side? That's the paper I mentioned earlier. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, the bingo. Oh, I thought it said on there. Oh, here we go right here. The bingo right there. $40. For four $100 prizes. So technically what I do is it's $40, but my classes are also $40. So when you pay $40, you get the four card kits, you get the video, a PDF, if there's, you know, some fancy folder, you know, bizarre kind of card. Um, so you're really paying for the class and bingo is a bonus. So I have a lot of people that purchase that will not make it for bingo. They're not available and that's fine, or they don't think they're going to be available but they still participate. They still give their numbers and everything just in case, but you're still getting a class basically is, is kind of how it works out. So hopefully um, you guys would like to join that. Thanks, Angie. All right, let's go everybody. Number nine, we need some winner, winner, winners, winner, winner, chicken dinners. Number nine. Number three. Three is a lucky number. Oh, don't forget. Oh, drawing. See, I got to start writing stuff down. I just have so much. I can't even put a fishing lure on, right? Thank you, Melanie. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Number 20. Thanks again for the thumbs up. If you haven't given me one, I sure hope you will. It does help my channel a lot. And I really appreciate it. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. It will notify you. If you hit subscribe and then click on the little bell, it will notify you when I come live because I do a schedule. Um, I schedule my videos and then you'll get notified that I'm gonna be going live and hopefully you won't miss it. But you also get an email saying that too when you do that. So that way, number 26. That way you don't miss bingos. I do, uh, Videos on Wednesdays at 5.30 and Sundays at 5.30 p.m. And I'm in Pacific time. I'm in California. Number four. Okay, I'm going to slow down a bit. Uh-oh, uh-oh, look, you guys. Do you see this right here? Do you see it? Look, I'm so excited I don't have to cut those. Yippee. Pop the pot. Gone. Woohoo. And we're just going to put this right here. We're going to put it right there. Yay. Well, that just made my day. Number 
Yay. So Gloria, Angie, and Nancy are going to be doing some shopping. Obviously, if you guys don't have a demonstrator or need anything, I would love to be your demonstrator. Number 11. You can shop at MarcyBestCurtsStampinUp.net or you could go to MarcyBestCurt.com. On my blog, on the top right hand side, there's a big old circle that says shop. You click on that, it takes you right to my Stamping Up page to shop. So I would love to have you. Number 12. All right, there's lots of BIs. B-I-B-I. -B -I. And don't forget with my uh, Daisy class, if you're interested, you could purchase the suite from me and your class will be free, but you must fill out your registration form, which is the same place where Bingo was on my blog. Number 30. Or purchase the equal amount and you can still get the class for free but you must fill out the registration form again same place where bingo was on my blog or you can pay forty dollars because you might already have the set and i'll show you sneak peeks for that in a bit too all right number 27 we have lots of BINs, Carol and Kathy, Linda and Gloria and Corey. There might be some above, I didn't see them. They snuck by. Is there anything that you guys want to see in an upcoming bingo? Like a stamp set in the catalog that you might be interested in seeing used? Let me know. Linda, B-I-N-G. All right, here we go. Number two. Boy, that paper just looks sloppy when I write on it. And of course, my little squigglies right here. Hi, Olivia and Stephanie and Leslie, all on with B.I. and Janet. Number six. Bobette with a B.I.N. This one might be a long one unless Linda up there just kills it. Let's see. Shaky shake. Almost done, guys. Don't forget the drawing. Got to do the drawing. Number 17. Ooh, Dana with the B-I-N. Olivia, Bobette, all have B-I-N. Jennifer, delicate doilies. Oh, let me write that down. Twenty-four. My kitty is still wondering where I'm at. Twenty-one. Olivia and Lorraine, both with, with a B-I-N. Ooh, B-I-N-G for Gloria, which she's playing for fun, we know. Stephanie, B-I-N-G, Bobette, and Trina. Ooh, we're getting close, you guys. All right, next number, 29. 29.
<laughs> Trina has bingo. Let's take a look. Trina, let me find the page here. All right, number three, number nine, number 13, 21 and 29. Look at that. Woo, last two. 29 and 20, 21 and 29. Congratulations, Trina. Yay. Trina, number four. Let me write that on here. Number four. Congratulations. Yay. All right. So now I have to go switch to my other computer because I, silly me, I did my, um, well, not silly me, but the, the names are all on double-sided sheets. So I am going to go on my other computer over here and change my page bingo and I'm going to scroll up and down and then click on a name and they're very small so let me just hope I don't go too far and the name is is Linda Robertson on Linda Robertson I haven't seen her chat but she may be here but Linda Robertson, you paid for bingo. If you weren't able to make it, that's okay. You still won. I'm glad you liked them. So let me pull these all out for you so you can see on this beautiful, messy paper. Well, now I'm wondering which one. Okay, so this is the one. Well, we're going to show you the right one on the on the shaker card. One, two, three, four. So Linda Robertson, before I forget, she won Petal Park. Petal Park. So I'm gonna give her this sweet, I mean this bundle. So I am, let me write that down, Linda Robertson. Okay, yay, congratulations to Linda. I am so glad you guys liked the cards. So here they are again. One last look at all four of them with, um, there you go. I hope you enjoyed them. Again, July's bingo next week. There is a link below. You can register and here is the sneak peek. And then I'm also gonna show you the, uh, let me look. June class is still available June 29th. How that works is the 29th is just a date for me to make sure I have the kits mailed out already by then. My video done for you, so you'll have your video link before then. And then you come to a private video link. So this is not like bingo, it's a private video link. And then you just create your cards at your own pace, your own leisure, you will have that link to create with. You will also have um, your kits and everything. Now that one, obviously you're going to need the Cheerful Daisies um, set. And like I said, when you purchase it, uh, the class can be free. You just have to register for it, or you can do equal value, or you can pay for the class for $40. Oh, you guys are so welcome. Now the Hey Chuck class has a little sneak peeky right there. So Hey Chuck is an online class. It's $40, you get four projects, a video tutorial, a PDF with measurement detail. So I will give you the measurements of everything. I'm not gonna go into deep detail unless I do a crazy P um, 3D item. And I have one that's kind of 3D, but it's really not crazy, so. Yes, a thumbs up would be great. Thank you so much. Uh, but this class, there's our my little my little chickadee, my little rooster. So that is um, going to be a super super fun class. And if you can RSVP by July the fifteenth, um, you will also receive a free gift. 
I like the Hey Chuck class. Oh, good, Linda. Um, I don't have sign up for Hey Chuck yet because I just finished three cards on that yesterday. And um, I wanted to get the bingo put up for you guys for next bingo. But I will be working on that and hopefully it will be up by this weekend. So that way, um, if you purchase the um, bundle from me, your class is free. So if you uh, already have it, then obviously you can pay the $40 or purchase another, um, whatever the bundle was, 51 something, I think it is. Um, and then the class can be free too. So you get product and you get a free class. So that's kind of fun. Um, and that will be for July. Don't forget those of you who won bingo, please send me your order so I can put it in um, in June. Okay, I wanna put that in in June. I try to keep my bingos month to month and separate. So that would be fantastic. I want to do both classes. Okay, Bobette, right where you went to do the bingo, um, it's just in the same place. And so when you go on there, you'll see, I just don't have the Hey Chuck yet. I have um, next month's bingo and I have the Daisy class already on there. I will definitely register for this class. Order bundle from you. Great, Gloria, thank you. Robin, I'm glad you had fun. So thanks so much, everybody. I really, really appreciate you supporting my business. It is a huge, huge um, appreciation. It is just, I'm, I can't even tell you how much I appreciate it. So thank you so much. If you have any questions, do not hesitate to ask me. And I will see you guys on Sunday. It's Father's Day. So if you can't make it, I get it. But come back and check out what we're going to be making. See you later. Bye.